and, yeah. and but, the DNC exactly. keynote yes. address, and the and the fact that he was the biggest fundraiser well, if you're going for the, Congress if you're going for off the, the DNC Democrats keynote, in 2006. Then Julian Castro is going to be the president. Is the America's, not, America's not ready Bam. for that. I think that was a nut period. sack in your face. Yeah. No, it's it's not a nut sack yeah. in my face. <laughs> <laughs> well, so Julian Castro is is a mayor. There's no way he's going to make that jump. I to agree, running that's for president. not likely. But I mean, no, Barack there's Obama just, was there's a not a Barack Obama right now, and Hillary Clinton is a different candidate because back then people people could throw away Hillary Clinton and say, you know what. She's just been. Uh, she she was the wife of a president. You know, she's just trying to take advantage of the name. What has she really done? But now she's been Secretary of State. So she's got the economic chops of the Clinton administration, the foreign policy chops of the Obama administration. Well, she's been yeah, senator. Well, you look at Egypt. Look at Egypt. Look at Libya. Done. And, and, and that's, that's what I'm going to say. At this point, and and what's, and that's what I don't think Barack Obama. I'm going to say. Yeah, Barack Obama. Barack Obama. I don't think Barack. Oh my God, you're so offensive. <laughs> Shit. Sorry, about, it's been in a country guys. full of white people for the last three months. <laughs> yeah. so it comes back, everybody's Barack Obama. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so I gotta answer your phone. Hey, 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 hey oh we're recording. God. We're recording. Can I call you back? Oh, oh my god. god. Don't, this is not getting edited out. No, this is not. No. <laughs> this is definitely going Brian's never having a political career what? either. Jesus Christ. Okay, so I've, I've got a question I want to ask. Uh, we'll be done recording in about 40 minutes. <sighs> Just uh, hold your fucking composure, man. Get some testicles. All right, everyone say hi to Brian's girlfriend. Uh, hey, hi, Brian's hi, girlfriend. Brian's girlfriend. Uh, He's cheating on you with Tez. No, nah, we murdered Tez. And you, it's my fiance. We, uh, we, got oh. in, we got engaged in Geneva. Congratulations. In Congratulations. Congratulations. Now the don't world. Tell her. Now the world knows. <laughs> don't tell now her. The world knows. <laughs> don't tell her dad though, because her dad doesn't know. Oh shit! Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh shit! Okay, sorry. At least this won't be public. That's going on YouTube. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Go ahead, Joey. All right, here's my question. Yeah, a little Do distracting, but no. Does go ahead. plutocracy help economic growth? In other words, is plutocracy a form of government which seems immoral? But it's actually good for our economy and our way of life. <laughs> it's not good for our economy because it uh, restricts um, <coughs> diversity in the market. For one, it's though you know the you want as less competition as possible in a plutocratic system. You want you know, and even when you have competition, you have Coke, Pepsi, McDonald's, Burger King, where they're making money off of the AT and T, Verizon. The the, the the competition between each other is what fuels. The profits. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not necessarily good for us because what we have is a less, like, with food choices, like, Burger King is actually making the Big Mac now, and they're like, yeah, we st we stole this from McDonald's. So come come eat our Big Mac, and you're getting the same inferior products. With just sesame <laughs> seeds on the bun. And with, a, yeah. with, a, with a different name on it. I mean, so it's like... You don't really have any dietary choices because the market is concentrated with similar food items. And, you know, if you want to eat right and healthy, you have to spend more money and nobody's... All right, really Bridgemont, you're done. What was no, the question again, Joey? No, I'm not. I'm just saying, I'm saying that... <laughs> but I think you got to get to a deeper question. I mean, is economic... Why, why economic growth? Why should we value economic growth in itself? You should, gra you should value economic growth because... The more the more the economy grows, the more money goes in the system. The more money can be spent, and the better That's, it is for everybody. Because, because more paper dollars it's, it's, it's better if you own Joey shares. Answer this. <laughs> I'll answer it. If you put money in the stock market and index funds, then for your retirement, then it will benefit you if the economy grows because your retirement account grows. C controlled economic growth is good for the economy, but uncontrolled economic growth can often have exactly. disastrous consequences. Exactly. All right, if no. you look at what happened in, like, in the Soviet Union when they had all the uh, oil drilling and stuff they were doing in Central Asia, right. totally unregulated, totally irresponsible, but it was money. I mean, that was how the Soviet Union was able to finance so much of everything they spent money on, weapons and the rest. And now you look 20, 30 years later and the Caspian Sea is empty. I think it's the Caspian, but I mean, it's just oh, total, yeah, yeah. you know, if you, yeah. you can't have totally reckless, just what's gross, that we built a new factory, but we put it next to marshlands that are now ruined forever. Yeah. You know, you can't do that. Now, you can have controlled economic growth 
and manage things responsibly, but you can't just totally, just willfully ignore everything. So, so here, here's the thing. Economic growth is important because the economy is important. Because our economy, that's our survival. That's our ability to make ends meet. That's, that's how we're going to get our goods, our services at the end of the day. That's how we get everything from medicine to food to shelter. All right, well then, so, so you believe in trickle-down economics then, basically, right? I if believe in, I believe in what? Trickle-down economics Oh, trickle-down? No, no. Well then, well, what you just said was if the economy grows, so then it helps side. everybody. And it gets what you need to eat. But, I mean... Hold, hold on. I, I, I said I support economic growth. That doesn't <laughs> necessarily mean I support But no, you're making a blanket side. statement that right. basically right. economic growth Hey, shut thing. the That's fuck up! Holy oh, shit. Would you like to repeat that? No. <laughs> <laughs> so, we have to clarify here. We have to define economic growth. Um, I think we need to look at GDP, and we need to look at employment levels. If GDP grows, but employment levels fall, that's a fucked up economy. We have to look at both. And yeah, so far, the conversation has ignored that point. And also, you have to look at the context of what the employment numbers mean, because... A lot of times you'll have, especially in certain countries, they will manipulate their employment rate. Like going back to the Soviet Union, I don't know why I'm using that example so much, but they would Communist. have, they would, <laughs> no, they would, they would call it full employment because everybody would be listed as having a job that was able-bodied. You know, if you weren't pregnant or disabled or whatever, but nobody had a job because they all were given jobs like street cleaner that weren't necessary. So hey, always, I just got back from Switzerland, and I will say that street cleaner jobs are necessary they, to maintain employment levels. It was an example. I would walk to work to the bus stop, and I see people in their nice uniforms, nice equipment, cleaning the streets, beautiful country, sweeping <coughs> in the morning. We need more of that in, in America. All right, well, so what? I was walking. Just, I'm just saying we need yeah. more of that in America. Switzerland just voted on guaranteed income, and it actually didn't pass. But you were there for that vote, right? Weren't you in country when they voted on that? I guess I was in country uh, he wasn't June paying to November. I talked to him yeah, about were, this. were you disappointed in I your had to future tell him country? It <laughs> 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 I'm like, you're in fucking Geneva, man. What are you doing? It's down the street from you. <laughs> my uh, my roommate my roommate has been living in Switzerland for eight years. Um, I love you, Alex. And he uh, <laughs> he just got the um, right to vote, hmm. I think, for the first time recently. But he's not a citizen yet, so I guess there's some way where he can vote. But yeah, I, I didn't really pay much attention to what okay. was going up for votes because I knew even my roommate, who had been there for years, hardly had a chance to have a say. All right, so Brian, I'm gonna throw a little something in your equation here. Uh, since you say employment is always mm -hmm. good, is that is that always true? What if we could get robots to replace every single job in, in our entire country? Entire, yes. our entire I economy? will say, oh, I will maintain. maintain just hypothetically, I don't think it's possible. Fine, I have your answer. Yes, employment is good uh, because of the healthy worker effect. So I'll make a health argument there. However, I will nuance it by saying I think productivity has increased to the extent where we can cut back to, um, say, 25-hour work weeks. Um, I think the forty-hour work week is bogus. How will people, uh, you know, how will people maintain their lifestyles off of a twenty-hour work week? You know, say yeah, raise you wages make, to. I would say, you know, I would say, I think it's the, interesting as you've seen over the past 20, 30 years, technology and stuff has massively increased. Now we have, you know, computers that used to be the size of this room on our phones, and you would think as you increase technology, everything should be simpler, easier, faster for people. But yet, and it should. But yet Americans are working longer hours than exactly. they ever have before. That's because so that our political activity is also skyrocketing. Exactly. So, so that shows hours. that shows that is the sign of a fucked up economy. I would agree that the economy has has issues in the way that it functions, and I would say also that you have to have you want to have low unemployment, uh -oh. healthy. <laughs> <low unemployment>. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> You want to have can, we, uh, can we make sure we have a clear shot right now? We have a man that just put on a, a screen uh, mask. And All right, now, now, here's, now here's what you got to keep in mind. Is, is Productivity is important, and the more hours people work, we're able to create more profits, we're able to create more well-being for all of our citizens, and we need more of that kind of stuff. You know, like, like the person working at McDonald's, 25 hours a week? No, that's not enough, because that way people won't be able to get their burgers on time, you know what I'm saying? So you've got to have these people working 40, <laughs> if, 50 hours a week. That way more people get their burgers, shareholders <laughs> get their profits, and we're and able to keep moving wages. on. This is, this is the way that America is designed to work. But the thing is, though, is that if, if people are working longer hours, they're not hardly being able to get the enjoyment out of what they're producing. Because, I mean, if you can't, for example, in Europe, they have guaranteed vacation time. They have paid sick leave. They have maternity leave. All that so, stuff costs money and makes your burgers more expensive. 
but it's have really, you thought about that Steen? it's really not that Do you want to hurt the consumer Steen? it's really not <laughs> <laughs> the consumer is the person who wants to have a good quality of life you would assume and if it's between, if you can have a nice vacation once a year with your family, or you can produce 50 more hamburgers a day, which one are you going to choose? Well, well if, if I'm a shareholder... If you more hamburgers, you have more money to go on vacation, and people can make that decision for themselves. But you can't go themselves. on vacation if you're working all the time. Well, well that, that is a problem. problem. I don't want to steam on here. <laughs> but you know what? If you work 60 <laughs> hours a week, you start working 60 hours a week, then eventually you can have that week off. Th this is In the, the meantime, you're able to make enough money so that when you don't show up at home to take care of your kids, you can pay somebody else to do that. This is the problem for too many See, Americans, this is, this just makes a better And you're going to hurt the healthcare industry. People can't get their burgers. They might not get their diabetes. <laughs> and then what? <laughs> yeah. They might not get their heart disease. And then what? Think all the doctors that'll oh, be out of work. All because Steen wants a better standard of living for the American consumer. All right. <laughs> um, no problem. Yeah. You guys want to take a break? Let's do it. Let's take a break. No, I think break we should time. work longer hours. What are we doing? <laughs> Where are we going? You're Brian. with Plutocracy now. This is Joey Hornbuckle. Yeah, Brian Basin. <laughs> Bridgemont Bowles. Good to know about Scott Brown. Steen Kirby. All right. This is the underground movement following the daily struggle between the special interests and the popular will. So here's the issue. Here's the issue that I have. Right now, there's a lot of people arguing, saying that we need to have tax deductions for artists. That doesn't just mean painters, this means uh, painters, <coughs> musicians, <laughs> anyone that's contributing to our culture, what anyone that's making America Wikipedia a more editors. interesting place. Wikipedia editors? Do you yeah. get an income for that? No, I, no, yeah, no, I don't, no, I don't, no, I don't no, <laughs> Are you asking if they should get tax deductions or if they're artists? Yeah, for their volunteer labor. Can they like write that volunteer labor off? That's, that's, that's something, something to talk social. about, right? That's something to talk about. Yeah, something to talk about, yeah. yeah so, writing off volunteer labor, getting tax credit for volunteer labor. Okay, so here's the thing. Artists make people happy, but they don't get tax deductions. Congress says we cannot afford tax deductions, but Congress is also saying that we can afford tax deductions for oil companies. Okay, What's going on here? How do you tax the artists? Are you taxing them off shows, off album sales, off number of patent sales, or... Everything. Uh, but... Or they the don't, money they, they make working at Starbucks. <laughs> but they don't get, but they don't get, they don't get taxed for show money. They, you know, that's all 100% profit. They don't pay any taxes on show money. Is they do a show at a club and they get five thousand dollars for it? They don't pay any taxes. Who the hell money. gets five thousand dollars at a club? I bet right? some yeah, of them. Uh, ludicrous. Ludicrous. Oh, God. I'm you know, not really like, focusing you know what I'm on the ludicrises of the world. Yeah, but if you're thinking insane. about like if more you're like just the gonna, humble artists, if you're just gonna pay all that cash money you got to do a show for fucking drugs, then of course that money should be tax free. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ. You buy a scissor. I know plenty if of the artists. Government, if the I government know plenty wants of artists to be, who don't do drugs anymore. So. Fine. You but if the government... Lie. You don't know any of the artists who don't do drugs. They want, I don't care, painters, uh, Are they still artists? That's like, art is, uh, it requires drugs. That's like paint. You know? oh, yeah. Here's well, here's, uh, my, here's my point. Here's the Michael logic. Michael Bay. His movies are so bad. Shut the fuck up. If the government wants to create a black market by not letting us have the freedom to try certain substances then they're asking for tax evasion. So fuck it. And they can actually tax, you know, the illicit items. You know. They should. Yeah, you know. Like mushrooms. I mushrooms mean, have been proven, like scientifically, to like show benefits to people's lives. Like but is, isn't that why uh, bitcoins are taking no, off? psilocybin. <laughs> oh, oh. Psilocybin like mushrooms. Oh, good yeah. shit. Okay. But no, really, like, isn't that why bitcoins are taking off? Because it's, it's easier to use that on the black markets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of the reasons, and that, going back to your tax comment, I have two comments, I'll talk about the drug war thing too, but going back to your tax comment, the other thing is, is you have to remember, the artists and painters don't really have a lobby in D.C., or at least they don't have one near as strong as oil. So I think what you're saying mm -hmm. is people so, don't have so a lobby. So yeah, if, that, if mm -hmm. all the guitar players and the painters get together and give congressmen, you know, the, the head of the tax committee, whatever committee that is, appropriations or whatever, they give a million dollars, he might be more willing to... Negotiate. Oh, but so, so, so what? Because the government's bought <laughs> off. So oh, what, 
So, so who, what? Who, 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 has, who has more money? <laughs> who has more money? That's what it's all about. See, we, we can't make the research and development tax credit permanent, even though that's really great for the economy. We can't get the earned income tax credit expanded, but the tax credits for oil companies, that's permanent, baby.